Welcome to Patagonia in southern Argentina. We see before us a vast and desolate landscape. Devoid of trees, there's nothing to stop the incessant winds which whip the visitor mercilessly. But through this bleak landscape runs a blue artery in the form of the Rio Gallegos, granting dry nature new life and strength. Summer is short and intensive. It's just wonderful to be here again, a special feeling that's hard to put into words. It feels like home in a way, even if we're as far away from home as it's possible to be. The history of sea trout in Argentina is quite short, and the first brown trout only came to the Rio Gallegos at the end of the 1920s. English fishing enthusiasts took trout from among other places Loch Lomond in Scotland. But the lack of food in the river drove the trout out to sea, and it was thought that the project had failed. During the 1960s, there were reports of salmon in the mouth of the Rio Gallegos, but these turned out to be the brown trout which had returned to the river as sea trout. And this migration between sea and river has continued to this day, when fish in their tens of thousands now run up the river to ensure the survival of the next generation. The sea trout in the Rio Gallegos live about eight or nine years, of which the first two to three years are spent in the river. This young strain of sea trout is known here as sea-run brown trout, as they behave very much like resident brown trout. They're fished using the same methods and flies as would be used for nymph and streamer fishing for brown trout. I got, yeah, thank you. Okay. The Patagonian sea trout have a unique body shape. The maximum weight is between 12 and 13 kilos, and the average weight of catches is amazingly high four and a half kilos. They're extremely compact and muscular, a result of the constant flow of food brought in on the tide to the river mouth and the lower reaches. Moreover, the oceans around the Antarctic are full of nutrition and different sorts of krill can be found in enormous quantities. A few fish sometimes remain higher up the river and live like normal brown trout. But eventually, when they've grown bigger, even these make their way to the ocean in search of food, as there isn't enough in the river. You don't often see a brown trout weighing more than two kilos. We're staying at the Estancia Las Potreras, which is the base for our Argentine adventure, and it's a real mecca for fly fishermen. Steiner from Norway is one of the guests at Las Potreras during the first week of January and he's really passionate about his fishing. A backhand cast is the most effective method for conquering the strong winds. Towards the end of the day the wind drops and there's even a little shelter on Beck's bank thanks to the bushes on the island. Back for the sea, yes. Oh, this is what life is about. I tried to get on the side of it. Oh shit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh. 
Fresh fish. Yeah, fresh. Oh, beautiful. Fresh lady. Fresh lady. All yours. Oh. Who do you have the oh. camera? Okay, maybe. Ten pounder, nine pounder. Mm. <sighs> yes. <laughs> Euphoria. Euphoria is a good word to describe this fantastic fishing, and we're going to join Steiner and his friends during their fishing trip on the Rio Gallegos. Las Putreras has 40 kilometers of fishing waters and 50 named pools at its disposal along the Rio Gallegos. The concept is to focus on the fishing, choosing the times of day when the fishing is best and taking a siesta in the middle of the day when the winds are fiercest. By using knowledgeable guides and a rotation system, you get to experience an enormous variety of fishing. The guides are absolutely invaluable, as conditions change quickly depending on weather, wind and water levels, which affects the fishing considerably. You might fish with small nymphs one day, only to be using large glittering tube flies the next. No day is like another, one of the delights of fishing on the Rio Gallegos. But everything that happens is on nature's own terms. Steiner and Tor are fishing companions from Norway and they've made several trips to Rio Gallegos. They're fishing the pool above the old iron bridge, near the lodge. The bridge was shipped over from England and is a well-known landmark. The wind has calmed and the magical evening light makes it a delight to be fishing. But you can't be sure the fishing will get better just because the wind has dropped. A new day and new challenges. Tor, also known among friends as the Torminator, is going fishing with Juan Manuel as his guide. Today the wind has blown up very early and will certainly test the fishermen. Presentations might not always be perfect, but the most important aim is to get the fly out to the fish, so Tor presses the line into the wind. Over the years, Tor and Steiner have learned from their experiences and this usually pays dividends in the form of fish. This is the fly that uh, caught me the fish and I uh, got it from the, the guide. Black and yellow, very nice fly. Even Steiner manages to hook a fish today. Tor and Steiner line up one trout after another during the week. And Steiner is named top rod for the week with 11 fish in all. Very 
good. Nice and easy. <laughs> But Tor's not finished for the day. In the early evening, another trout takes his fly. Goat is a pool that's open to the wind, but if you can only get your fly out, there are plenty of fish there. We fish our way home towards the lodge, and Stainer and Tor are nearing the old bridge again. It's a bit windy tonight, and no evening is the same, except for the heavenly light show that we're treated to. I think the wind really is increasing. The Rio Gallegos is 196 kilometers long, 250 if you count the tributaries. The sources are the Rio Penitente and Rio Rubens, right up by the border with Chile. The sea trout migrate all the way up these rivers to spawn, but most fishermen are interested in the resident trout, which can be much bigger here than in the main river. The winds here can be even more extreme, and you have to wait for periods of lighter winds to be able to fish effectively. But these periods can be very short. This may not be one of the Rio Penitente's biggest trout, but it's certainly beautiful. The Rio Gallegos starts where Rio Rubens and Rio Penitente join up. The river runs through vast deserted areas, but halfway to the sea we find a hotel, built in the 1940s. The Bella Vista, the destination for the first sports fishermen. They came here not just because the fishing was good, but because it was the only place along the entire river where you could stay until you get to the river mouth. Displays of stuffed fish and flies bear witness to the great catches of times gone by. And the photographs in the Hall of Fame are a delightful mix of old and new. Las Putreras, 60 kilometers from the river mouth, offers a wide variety of pools with fast flowing and slower waters and really deep holes. Sometimes the wind makes it difficult to read the character of the river. But when the wind drops, you can really see how very different the pools are. The river maintains its character more or less all the way to the sea, while the last 40 kilometers are tidal, with water levels differing by up to 12 meters. The river mouth and estuary are perfect nurseries for fish and the powerful tidal flows bring a never-ending supply of food. During our trip along the Rio Gallegos, we made a real detour from the tributaries to El Calafate to visit one of southern Patagonia's greatest tourist attractions, Los Glaciares, which is the country's next largest national park and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's made up of over 50 glaciers, of which the Perito Moreno Glacier is the most well known. As a visitor, you can come very, very close to this immense glacier, which releases its sediment-rich icy waters into Lake Argentino. It's a really cool experience, and you're made aware of man's insignificance and need for humility in the face of nature 
as you stand at the foot of this enormous icy mass. Here, where the glacier meets the lake, it's 70 metres high. But what we can't see is that there's another 100 metres of ice wall under the surface. This is one of few glaciers which is still growing, and here, where it's carving, it's pushing against land. It forms a natural dam which divides Lake Argentino in two. Sometimes the water levels can differ by up to 30 metres before the water breaks through the plug of ice and the levels adjust. This takes place every four or five years. This is the spot. David Roby is fishing with his guide, Diego, who always manages to find hot spots, whatever the conditions. As these can change quickly, experience is very important, and Diego has been fishing on the Rio Gallegos all his life. Should I try to add a few, uh, another metre? <laughs> okay, from here. Yeah, we're in, we're in, we are in! My man! Okay, follow the fish, follow the fish. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Can you take the net? Please. One happy man. <laughs> I'm very, whoa, you beautiful. It's a big fish. Yeah. It's a big fresh one. I didn't realize it was as big as that. <laughs> yeah. It's a strong fish. The joy of catching a fish is always the same. You are so and isn't this a really fantastic trout? Oh, whoa, muscle! One more. It's a nice fish. Look at that. I've never seen anything quite, quite so beautiful. I love you, Diego. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. <sighs> nice take. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. Yes. So that's the fly. Looks like nothing that lives on this planet, but it did the business. It caught that beautiful sea trout. Unfortunately, it's uh, bent the hook a little bit. So Diego says, change the hook. We've changed the hook, but no more trout. It can be a little cold during the first week of the season, so you need to wear functional clothing. Layer on layer is a good rule, as the sun can break through and you can very quickly get summer temperatures. Break it, maybe. Thank you. 
The choice of fly is often the decisive factor for success. And on the Rio Gallegos, you need to re-evaluate your previous experience of fishing for sea trout. The best flies are often those you would choose last from your box, or you don't even have them in your box. But then your guide can conjure them up from his private collection. Juan Manuel chooses a fly with rubber legs for Ulrika. This isn't as strange as it sounds. Rubber legs seem to be a must for flies here. In the slower parts of the river, the legs help to give the fly a seductive sway, which can tempt the most sluggish of trout to take. Today, David is fishing with Thomas, and they've started fishing furthest up the waters at the pools above the wagon wheel. Sometimes you're especially keen on fishing, but there should always be time for a coffee break, which gives you the chance to make plans for the evening's fishing with Diego. Just as big to hurt, not to kill. It's crazy, I tell you. Okay. Nice yeah. Come on, Thomas. So the water. water. Oh, 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 there is a god, there is a god. <laughs> I don't believe it. Towards evening, yeah. we find ourselves in one of the exciting cliff pools, 75, yeah, 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 sure. and David's hooked yet another amazing fish. Oh, gotta get it. This. Okay. 
Okay. What's more, we take our landing. I got it. Wow. Look at this fish. <laughs> Take the size oh, first. Yes, yes, yes. Look at that. It's a hog. It's eight kilos. Look eight at this. Kilos. You eight see kilos. it? Yeah, I do. I do. I'll show it to you. Oh, will you look at that? <laughs> oh, you beautiful fish. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas helps David take the trophy picture. This will be one to remember when David's back home. <laughs> the last of the daylight has gone and it's time to get back. But even though you're tired and weary, you're satisfied. And now you'll have a chance to talk about fish. This one will be perfect for this condition. Fishery conservation includes a lot of different activities. During the winter, Diego, the fishing guide, meets and talks to people to help increase interest locally in protecting the sea trout stock. We are a, a, big, group, a big group of people that we are working in this river for a long time already. Um, we were worried uh, about the conservation of the fish and the nature. So we were trying to introduce some good uh, things to the kids in the city, going to the school to talk to them about conservation and fishing. They were very interesting. They are very interested in fishing. The point is uh, they like to go fishing. So we start showing them some pictures about fishing, talking about fishing and of course conservation of this river. So we are just working and putting pressure very worried about the river, nature, conservation is, I think it's the way to do the things in this Gaseos River. It's one of the best rivers in the world for sea trout. So we try to, to, to have it like that. <laughs> Another morning at the breakfast table, but not just any morning. This is the last morning with the gang. And after breakfast, it's time for the obligatory group photograph. But there's time for another trip to the river. Every opportunity to fish must be taken in full. Oh dear. <clears throat> so you've got to get it right first time. Yeah. <gasps> pressure on you. The pressure is on. <laughs> oh. David now has Claudio as his guide and they're in one of the lower pools, Barranca Blanca. It's hard, it's hard fishing. And it's fishing in a wilderness area that we don't have back in the UK. And to a certain extent, it, it's rather spoilt my fishing at home because you don't have these wide open spaces. You don't have kilometer after kilometer of river virtually to yourself. Uh, I will still fish at home, but I think now my heart lies here in Riga Jagos and with their big, hard-fighting sea trout. Oops. Damn. Peter Staude is fishing with Hernan at Bridge Pool. This is a fantastic pool, and if you don't want to take a siesta, you can always sneak down here for an extra fishing session.
Hey, it's coming. Oh. In the afternoon, Peter and Kasla are fishing together with the guide Juan Manuel. If fishing is one of the pleasures of life, Peter's enjoying another. Sometimes you deserve a little treat, and a good cigar tastes extra special on the river. Mm -hmm. So normally if they come, they go and they feel the harder current and they stop a bit, and that's when they take. Mm -hmm. I think it's similar, heavier. Okay. Not here, right? Shrimp. Let me see what names you have. I will go with this one. As evening falls, we land another fish, this time a brown trout. Is it the brown? It's coming too. I'm so revved up. It's impossible to take him in, no? When fishing for sea trout, you can see a brown trout as a sort of bonus fish, but it's always pleasant to catch fish. Doesn't make a lot of noise, I think. The opening week of the season has seen some exciting fishing, which is very promising for the rest of the season. A lot of fine fish have been caught, and perhaps even more, bigger and better, have been lost. These days have been filled with marvellous fishing combined with good companionship, giving us memories for life. It's not surprising that you think of the Wild West when you see the landscape, and this is probably what North America looked like once upon a time. The comparison with the Wild West is not completely crazy, as the Sundance Kid is said to have robbed Lloyd's Bank in Rio Gallegos during his time in Argentina. The big difference though, is that in North America the West was tamed, while here in Patagonia the wildness is still there to be discovered. The landscape of Patagonia is unique. This harsh environment with its fierce winds can seem desolate, but if you give it a little time, you'll be pleasantly surprised. You're always close to wildlife here, and the meeting of man and animal is always an exciting experience. Sometimes you're an observer at a distance, watching herds of guanacos, an untamed relative of the llama moving proudly over the step. And sometimes you can sit a little longer to become better acquainted with a family of foxes, when the bravest of them all lets his curiosity get the better of him as he moves closer to you. The bird life along the river is very varied and rich, and when the wind drops lots of birds come out of the bushes. And there are an enormous number of different species of ducks on the water. Mm -hmm. 
you can see flamingos in some of the pools, adding a splash of colour to the grey-brown landscape. If you keep your eyes open during the car ride down to the river, you might see a caracara, a member of the falcon family, but really a carrion eater and much slower than a true falcon. Sometimes you can catch a glimpse of a black-chested buzzard eagle floating majestically against the clear blue sky, even if it's not so common in the lowlands. You can often see a rea, one of the biggest birds here. They're really fast when they get going. <laughs> All animals aren't wild, but we must mention the beautiful Argentinian horses that run freely around the river. You see them everywhere along the river, and this life in a herd roaming the wide open spaces has made them semi-wild and a little shy of people. One of the most impressive sights at dusk is to see them grazing peacefully against the backdrop of the majestic evening sky. It feels as if time is standing still, so you can just enjoy the silence of the peaceful night. We're off to fish up a limit which is a slow-flowing pool. Yes. If the wind is still, as it is just now, it feels almost impossible to fish it without scaring the fish. But with a long and delicate cast, Henrik manages to tempt one of the trout. Try to stay out of the water, so, because you don't have the wind here. Yeah, I know. This is very uncommon. They should they should run like hell instead. The, this no, this could be a really big one actually. We'll see what happened if it comes to shore. Now he's starting to move again. Think so. He's in the weed, he's here. Scheiße, scheiße, scheiße. Ah, it went good. Here he comes. Ah. Ah. Yeah, what do you think? 17 pounds? Maybe. 18? <laughs> no, you see, the fishman, he always adds a few pounds. That's true, that's true. We'll see, we'll measure it now. Yeah. The fly. Let me open that for you. Perfect. Perfect. 80... 86. 86 centimeters. 86. <laughs> this is nice fish. Yeah, it is. Grown fresh. Yeah, really a nice fish. Yes, man! <laughs> We've moved to the bridge pool where Henrik is fishing together with Gunnar Vestreen, a well-known author and sports fishing writer from Sweden. 
This is the first time Gunnar has visited Argentina, but he doesn't get a fish on his first day. It takes a while to get into the swing of things and learn this style of fishing, which is quite different to fishing for grayling and char in Swedish Lapland. Henrik can feel something pushing at the fly, and he's got it. Fantastic. Ooh, he's running. Here he comes. Huh? He doesn't like you at all. I think I have some weed on on the leader. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's some lead. Some weed. I just will try to get him to the net. Hernan, yeah? he doesn't like you. I know. <laughs> they smell guides with nets. Yeah. They do. Here he comes. Ah. He doesn't like you at all. Ah! <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, man. This is nice. That was a great fish, Henrik. I would have never thought it would get your fly in the fat part. Yeah, you never know. It See? hasn't seen that particular fly, so maybe. Maybe that was the cue, actually. Another day filled with expectations. Today, Gunnar's fishing with David Moore and Posho is their guide. Gunnar enjoys the sunshine warming nicely, but the wind makes casting extra challenging, so Gunnar uses a backhand cast to get more speed into the line. And suddenly it's there, Gunnar's first sea trout on the Rio Gallegos. There's a lot of tension in the air, and it's reassuring to have a guide by your side, ready with good advice and a helping hand during the fight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Whew, what a fish. Beautiful. Silvery. Uh -huh. yeah. 
Silver Dreams. It's not long before Gunnar has another fish on the go. Oh! This time, it's one of the river's resident trout that's taken the fly. I think it's a, yeah, I think it's a small little one. Nice. <laughs> At the same time, Henrik showing good form and in the strong wind, he lines up one fish after the other. The water has become a little murkier because of the waves, which makes the trout a little less shy and more eager to take. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have one there. Yeah. If you like. Gunnar went with Diego to Little Corner for some afternoon and evening fishing and hooks yet another fish. It feels delightfully powerful. The gusts of wind sweep in over the water while another large trout roots around in the deep. When you get back from the evening fishing, there's a lot to talk about. The talk is about the fish that were caught, but even more about the fish that got away. And then it's time to register the fish you caught, one or more, in the catch record. Just south of Rio Gallegos is the southernmost tip of the South American mainland and the approaches to the Strait of Magellan. The place was christened Cabo Vajenes, Cape Virgins, by Ferdinand Magellan in 1520. The name arises from the fact that landfall was made here on the 21st of October, which was the feast day of St Ursula and the 11,000 virgins in Catholic Spain. Magellan was Portuguese, but the voyage was financed by the Spanish crown. It was here that he first discovered these penguins, named after him as Magellan penguins. This is the largest colony of Magellan penguins in South America, nesting here during early summer. There are over 100,000 nesting pairs in the colony, and it's easy to be charmed by these lively rascals. They have their own individual personalities and are extremely cool.
Magellan penguins mate with the same partner each year. The male finds the same nesting site each year and the female follows the male's mating cry to find the nest. The female lays two eggs and the parents take turns to brood on them, which takes about seven weeks. After that, there's a month of hard work, as the newly hatched chicks have to be fed two to three times a day. The feeding period is in full swing, with a never-ending stream of penguin parents between the sea and the nesting areas. We carry on fishing in the Rio Gallegos, the one day windier than the next, but also the one day better than the next. Howard is really successful in conquering the wind, and yes, there are fish in there. The problem is the weed. Yeah, you know. But there's a spot here, isn't there, in between here that's free of weed that you've got to try and land it in. <laughs> oh, do you see the size of that? That's a monster. This was an extremely big fish, and even Howard, with all his experience of fishing, is a little shaken. The fish has gone, but it'll certainly make a good story to tell. I was trying to stop it getting in that weed on the other side. Yeah, That's no, a... I can see that. That was a fish of a lifetime, that one. <laughs> they always are when you lose them, aren't they? Howard manages to catch a lot of fish, despite losing a few, and he's this week's top rod. During the week, he lines up one trout after the other, and ends up with no less than 13 fish landed. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> nice fish. Diego told me that he was... Krista, who owns the lodge, a is a very experienced fisherman, spending a lot of time on this exciting river. Krista's fishing with Claudio, and he has lots of tales to tell about his fights with large trout. He, he just went, 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 went. Lost him maybe 100 meters back in down. I was shaking, big fish. Out again. You made another cast. 100 meters down. Who came out? Four fish, four cost, everyone lost off the 100 meter down there. Uh, it cannot be brown trout. It's too big for that. Now I should have given up already. It is a brown trout. During the afternoon, Krista hooks one of the river's resident trout. Look at this. <laughs> he was 
it's a strong brown trout. <laughs> it's beautiful, with golden bronzed flanks decorated with speckles of red. Here it goes. But that, that, that blue. That's a little fish, eh? That's a nice trout. <laughs> <laughs> First stage, stage one. <laughs> Another week gone already, and it's time to gather on the steps for the obligatory group photo, with both happiness and a touch of wistfulness in the air. <laughs> Very good, guys. The ever-present sheep are an important part of the Patagonian landscape. There are over 40,000 sheep on the 117,000 hectares of the Las Putreras estate. They're mainly Corridale and Marino, known for their excellent wool. The estate's 12 gauchos care for the sheep, and twice a year the flocks are gathered for shearing. In the spring the whole sheep is sheared, well, only the head is trimmed during the winter. As the land areas involved are so huge, it's not practical to gather the sheep in one place, so there are several shearing stations. The shearers are like the navvies of times gone by, travelling from estate to estate, shearing an enormous number of sheep during a short, intensive period. These are skills of the very highest order. On their first day of fishing, Rolf and Eva experience an almost unnaturally windy day. A lot of people would give up and wait until the next day, but if you really feel the need to fish... The wind has dropped completely by evening, and Rolf is fishing the old bridge with Claudio as his guide. Look at this fish. It's fresh, very fresh. <laughs> nice. Very well done there. Boo and her husband Oliver have come to the Rio Gallegos to celebrate her birthday. She's fishing La Recta, and the river presents her with a little something extra as a birthday surprise. My bad casting got there. <laughs> Now, 
Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Perfect. Good luck with the water. In the water? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, thank you. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> That's very good. My birthday fish. <laughs> 81 times 50. Right, meaning so on my birthday I caught a 15 pound sea trout, which was fantastic. The bird life here is wonderful, and the gillies are very, very helpful. And other than the wind, it could be perfect. <laughs> it is perfect. And now I think I must go and try and catch another sea trout because my husband has caught one this morning and I can't let him beat me. Rolf is fishing in El Puesto at dusk, which must be the best time of day for fishing sea trout. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, 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 oi. It's strong. Maybe. No. It's not ready. <laughs> <laughs> this morning, Stain and Ben were fishing together in Upper Limit. Today, there are a lot of waves on the surface of the slow flowing pool. Ben hooks a fish straight away. We get another one, right? Yeah, we yeah. <laughs> And then it's time for Stan to get one as well. This pool has worked really well this week, providing good fishing, probably because the water level is just right. We end the week at Cantera, where Bent is fishing with Juan Manuel. Yet another sunshine fish. You feel that you just don't want this to end. Huh? Thanks. We didn't have a, a session without fish. What does this mean? It's yeah. very good. Oh, well, nice, nice session, huh? Yeah, yeah. always. It's a... Uh, yeah. How big is it? It's uh, yeah. two and a half. Six pounds. Six pounds, yeah. <laughs> All right, one more. It's evening on the Rio Gallegos, and silence falls over the Patagonian steppes. This is our very last evening, and then the dreams will continue. The dreams of once more returning to this land, the land that has captured my heart. This country, so far from my own, but which still feels like home. <laughs>